Okay, so this is question 8.15, and it says a uniform beam of length 1 meter and mass 10 kilograms is attached to a wall by a cable. The beam is free to pivot at the point where it attaches to the wall. What is the tension in the cable? Okay, so first off, let's go ahead and draw a picture. So here we have our lovely wall. And then off of that, that's supposed to be level. I need to do that a little step. Okay, cool. So there's our beam, and then there is our cable with 30 degrees. And they tell us that this whole thing, oh my gosh, I can't draw today. They tell us this whole thing is one meter long. Okay, so now um, they tell us in here as well that it is free to pivot about this point right here. So if we would forget that this wall is here and the cable is gone as well, and we just pretended that this thing were to swing around in a circle around this point right here, we can go either in this direction obviously, or it can, we can go in that direction. So if you remember from math, the unit circle, by convention, we kind of stick with what they're doing there. So we say if it's going up or in the counterclockwise direction, we say that it is positive, just like the unit circle is. And we say that if it's going clockwise, it's negative. Okay, so now with that, since we know that we are going to be having some forces on here as well, that means we're going to be dealing with torque. So first off, let's go ahead and draw our forces. They say we have a uniform beam, so that means we have mg directly in the middle of this board. And then, of course, we also have tension right there in the cable. Okay, so really that, or that is the only force that we have going on in this picture. We have tension, which is taking it up in this direction, and we have mg, which is going down in this direction. So now what is the formula for torque? We know that torque is equal to the radius times the force times the sine of the angle. All right, so what that means is for every single force that we have in our picture here, we're going to have an RF sine theta. So we'll have one for T, which will be positive since it's going up, and then we'll have one for mg, which is negative since it's going down. All right. So, um, one other little note, uh, actually we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and sum our torques now. So we have sum of the torque is equal to, I'm gonna start with T since it's positive. So we have the radius. So tension, it is acting on the beam at one meter. So its radius is one meter. And times the force times the sine of the angle, which is, in this case, 30 degrees. Okay, so now let's talk about what I was talking about just a second ago. We are gonna take sine of 30 degrees, because if we were to take, let me change color real quick. If we were to take T and break it up into its X and Y components, we know that we would have a X component right here, and we would have a Y component right here. So if you think about it conceptually, this x component, if we just look at that, the force is just pushing it into the pivot point, which isn't helping us spin around the circle at all. So the only one that we're interested in is in the y component. So if we take the y component slightly over here, add in another arrow. So that is the only one that we care about because it's the only one that's spinning it in the around the circle. The x component isn't helping that at all. So that is why we use the sine of 30 degrees. So remember, it's always the angle between the force and the radius, or the, the thing that it's acting on. All right, so now we're coming back to it. So we have radius, which is one meter, times the force, which we said is t, times the sine of 30 degrees. All right, so now we're good on that one. Let's do mg. So we're going to minus the radius, which is 0.5 meters times the force, which is mg, times the sine of 90. Spell that over a little bit. 
and then all of that it's in static equilibrium so it's always equal to i alpha but in this case since alpha is zero i times alpha will also that whole term will be zero because like we said it's in static equilibrium so let's go back real quick and talk about sine of 90. Sine of 90, if you plug it in your calculator, is 1. So when we come over to our picture, anything that is perpendicular, we basically don't worry about it. And so all of it kind of makes sense if you think about it, because all we care about is whatever the force is perpendicular to the, the thing that's spinning in a circle. So if it's already perpendicular, we don't need to break it up into its y component, because it's already done for us. Okay, so now let's rewrite what we have. So we have the radius, which is one meter. Let's rerun it. Times t, times the sine of 30 degrees, minus 0.5 meters times mg. And I'm going to leave sine of 90 out because it's just one. All right, so now we just need to solve for um, solve for t, that's what we want to find. So if I move 0.5 times mg over, we get 1 times t is the same thing as t, so we get t times the sine of 30 is equal to 0.5 times mg. Alright, so now we just divide by, whoops, Okay, so divide by sine of 30, divide by sine of 30. Okay, so now we're done. We've solved for t. And so this is canceled. So let me rewrite it one more time. t is equal to 0.5, or half of the weight of the board, divided by the sine of 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and plug that in and see what we get. So 0.5... Oh, whoops, let me, let me shift, plug in my numbers. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we, let's see, let's over here. We have 0.5 meters times the mass we said is 10 kilograms. And G is, of course, 9.8 divided by sine of 30. If we rewrite this, 10 times 9.8 is... Uh, 98, of course, times 0 0.5 sine of 30. So this is going to be 49. So I'm going to redraw it down here. So t is equal to 49 divided by sine of 30. Okay, so now let me plug it in my calculator. So 49 divided by parentheses sine of 30. And that gives us 98. Let me double check I did that right. So we know sine of 30 is in half. So 49 divided by 0 0.5 is 98. So T is a force. So we get it is equal to 98 newtons.